peace that's driven by fear. And so one of the breakthroughs that I experienced recently was that now that I was aware of what in the past had been my emotional home, and I was able to decipher and put together the fact that, yeah, hey, it's no surprise that I was experiencing so much anger and frustration and irritability in my life. Hey, what's up everybody? James Pyle here with Awareness Elevation. And in this video today, we're going to be addressing several topics. Uh, the major topics are going to include defining what an emotional home is and how we as human beings, as creatures, live from our emotional home. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the six human needs and how we can go about prioritizing and ranking those needs to structure our lives to actually be most fulfilling and create life on our terms, our dream life. And then we're going to talk a little bit about leading with love. And this is a very, very important topic to me because this is something that I have been working to practice as a place to live from and lead with in all of my actions and what I'm doing throughout each day of my life. And then I'm also gonna share some insight as to the number one method, the most powerful, most effective, and strongest surefire way to actually be able to lead with love and to live our lives from a place of love each and every day. So without spoiling exactly what it is, I'll just give you guys that little teaser. Let's go ahead and let's jump in today, starting with an emotional home. So we as creatures, we are meaning-making machines, right? Human beings are meaning-making machines and we attach meaning to things. Uh, we also, as human beings, we are emotional creatures. And as much as sometimes like a masculine type energy will try to tell us to not actually be pressing into our emotions to, you know, press in with logic and ration and rationale, um, it's actually very important for us to be in touch with our emotions because our emotions are actually what create energy. So as we've heard other people talk about that, you know, we as human beings, we don't have energy, we create, we generate energy, much like the way that a power plant generates energy, right? It doesn't just have energy intrinsically in the plant, it's doing something uh, oftentimes either utilizing a natural resource or through uh, a nuclear reaction, it's actually generating energy. And emotions are the way, the, the method, the pathway to generating energy as a human being. Uh, a good example of this is, is that if you've ever felt something emotional, for instance, like you've ever felt love in your heart, you know, you, you were in a moment where you were very present in that moment and you could feel love in that moment and you actually felt the energy of love and that emotion uh, that, that created even more energy, right? Um, one of the strongest emotions that people experience energy through is actually anger or frustration, right? We've all been in an instance where we were in a less than resourceful state and we actually felt anger and other frustration type emotions bubbling up and that usually creates a surge of energy right throughout our entire system um, we've also maybe maybe some of us have been very upset and had a lot of energy however almost all of us have definitely experienced a situation where someone else was ex upset was experiencing the emotion of anger and they were very energetic right um, another emotion that can generate a lot of energy uh, is excitement, right? Whenever we're excited about something, that there's a lot of, of energy that's generated through the being excited, right? Through the, the emotion of excitement, right? So what I wanna talk about in regard to an emotional home is the place that we actually, no matter what's going on in our lives, it's the place that we find a way to get back to each and every day. So an emotional home is, is a place of emotions where we live our life from, right? And most often, most humans actually are not aware consciously of their emotional home until they are, are elevated in their awareness of this, you know, through watching a video like this or through attending some sort of a self-development seminar or workshop or doing some coaching or some therapy. 
and actually then becoming aware of this instance, right? So the emotional home is the place that we have actually deep seated down into our subconscious mind that we live from emotionally and our day, our lives, our experiences in every single moment that we're alive are actually directed and driven through this emotional home. So um, I'm just gonna use myself as an example and share some things with you about myself and maybe you guys can can apply some of this into your lives and get a better understanding of what I'm talking about when I talk about an emotional home here. So for me, um, because of the way I grew up uh, in a household where there was a lot of uh, physical violence, meaning you know a lot of physical abuse, um, my father was very physically abusive to myself and my siblings. And what we saw demonstrated most often was uh, whenever uh, emotions were coming up in our father that that it actually would express itself as anger right like that emotions of anger there would be an explosion of energy screaming yelling and then of course the the physical altercations that came along with that right and so because of that from a very early age I actually took on anger and frustration and even irritability uh, as my emotional home right and it wasn't actually until recently that I had this breakthrough of my awareness uh, while I was going through an, an uh, immersion masterclass experience where I actually discovered that these were my emotional homes. And when I look back on my life throughout my life, my life was full of a lot of anger and frustration and irritability, right? So as I gained awareness of the fact that my emotional home all along has been anger, frustration, and irritability, it's no surprise to me that no matter what I was experiencing throughout my life, that I was finding a way back to this place every single day. Literally, I was finding a way to be angry or frustrated or irritable almost every day, pretty much every single day of my life, you know? And it didn't matter how, how much fun I was having, um, how much love or joy or happiness I was experiencing in any moment, um, one way or another, because this was my emotional home, I was finding a way to have uh, uh, create a scenario or manifest right these things into existence, right? Um, kind of like people talk about a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, because of the fact that those were my emotional home, I was creating a self-fulfilling prophecy every day to find a way to get angry, to be frustrated, or to get irritated, be irritable at things, right? And when I was younger, um, anger was like a big part of the energy that I used to like, you know, quote unquote, prove people wrong and uh, accomplish achievements in my life. And that's just not a healthy place to live from. Um, it's actually a place that's driven by fear. And so one of the breakthroughs that I experienced recently was that now that I was aware of what in the past had been my emotional home, and I was able to decipher and put together the fact that, yeah, hey, it's no surprise that I was experiencing so much anger and frustration and irritability in my life. It's because that was my centerpiece. That was the place deep down inside myself where I was finding a way to get to each and every day, right? So when I had the awareness of where my old emotional home had been, I then was able to shift my attention and energy into my new emotional home, in creating my new emotional home, and in creating routines and habits and practices so that I actually begin to deep seed in my subconscious mind my new emotional home. So uh, one of the things that I realized through this process is that my true emotional home that I know that I was designed to have from my creator and that is my highest self and my best self is actually love, okay? And not to just sound all foofy and you know all of this good stuff about love, yet at the same time to sound a little foofy and all of this good stuff about love, yes, love is the centerpiece of my life. It's the place that I'd been working to lead from in my life each and every single day and yet I was struggling to accomplish this. Like I had, I would literally write down, like I lead with love. This was like a daily objective of mine, a daily habit I was working to practice. And for some reason I was still always ending up frustrated or angry or irritated, right? At situations, at people, at environments, whatever, right? 
and it actually was a very powerful shift in my thinking. It happened almost just like this, at the, at the flick of a finger, at the, at the click of a, a light switch, right? And the shift is, is that I choose love as my emotional home. And through choosing love as my emotional home, I'm actually much happier. Um, I'm, I'm not experiencing anger. I'm not experiencing frustration. I'm not experiencing irritability in the ways I used to experience them. And I've just upgraded my life across the board because now I'm actually in this powerful place where I'm able to lead with love. And so this ties into the next thing that I want to talk with you guys about today, and that is the, the six top needs of human beings. At least, you know, this is according to Tony Robbins and how he describes things, right? That we all have six foundational needs that we need to meet, right? The six needs include things like um, certainty. Uh, the second one is uncertainty or variety. Uh, the third one is um, significance. Uh, the fourth one is growth. The fifth one is love slash connection. And the sixth one is contribution, right? And the way that Tony describes it is that as human beings, all of us have all six of these needs within us and that each individual has a different order of those needs and what they are. And the reason why this plays into the emotional home is that, you know, our emotional home feeds our needs and our needs feed our emotional home. They actually go hand in hand with each other. And so let me explain what I'm speaking about here. So again, as I was analyzing the ways that I, I was in the past and how my, my lower nature old self used to be, um, my top needs were actually um, significance and um, variety slash uncertainty, right? And uh, just a quick little disclaimer, a little footnote here, Tony actually describes that if a person has significance or certainty as a top need or as their top two needs, you're, you're literally screwed. You're gonna be very unhappy and you're gonna create a very unfulfilling life um, because those are, are important needs that definitely must be met. However, when those are the top one or two, uh, we're actually stacking the deck against ourselves and we are predispositioning ourselves for a dismal life of unhappiness um, unjoyous experiences. So one of the powerful things that I uh, came to the awareness of and realization is that I really don't have the need for significance or uh, variety slash uncertainty that I used to. And in fact, um, through the immersion program that I went through, uh, getting the upgrade, realizing that love is actually my emotional home, um, there's actually another word that I'm going to use to describe that in a moment here that I, I hinted at at the beginning of the video, and you might be able to guess what that is. Um, I actually was able to prioritize my top needs with my new emotional home, right? So my top need became love slash connection, which I know I've thrived on this need a lot of my life. I've been driven to um, have connection with others. I wasn't so much driven by love in the past. However, now that is my overarching need. That is the number one most important need for me to meet each and every single day is love slash connection. And through having this awareness of where my need is, I'm able to have awareness of how my actions are driven to meet that need and also to be aware in each moment, to be fully present in each moment when I'm experiencing things that are meeting that need, right? And then my second need is actually contribution. I need to contribute. I need to help make the world a better place than where I found it, when I found it, uh, when I was born. And I need to actually help others to transcend limitations and be their best self, AKA create life on your own terms, right? So actually with this newfound awareness of my top two needs, right, of love slash connection, and of, of uh, contribution, then I'm able to tie in what exactly is my emotional home. Well, it is love, okay, but there was another word that came to me that I've been working to practice so much each and every single day. And I've developed several rituals and daily habits to help me practice this, and yet I was still not quite fully embodying it. I wasn't really, really fully accepting it deep, deep down in my, my soul, in my spirit, in my, as well as in my subconscious mind, which would then force my conscious mind to make this reality. And that word that I realized that is actually my true emotional home is, that's right, it's gratitude. Right, And so as I mentioned before, I was struggling because I was working to live 
from a place of leading with love in my life, right? And I was like, well, how do I do this? Like, I just try to consciously focus on love. Well, the revelation hit me, actually, while I was going through this immersion program that the way to actually live with, with love as the driving force in my life is to live from a place of gratitude, right? And to actually practice gratitude throughout my day, right? And to pause any moment when I am experiencing gratitude and just be fully present in that moment and plug into that feeling that's inside of me of the gratitude. Because when I am experiencing gratitude, it's actually building love within myself. It's building love for my creator. It's building love for my life and all the blessings that I've been given. Uh, it's building love for self, right? Self-love so that I could be actually capable of loving others. Uh, and it's also building love for others within me, right? And so this has been the method, been the path that I've been able to uncover and to now get onto and to run every single day with all of my might. And it goes along with the saying of, I live in a beautiful state every day, no matter what because life is too short not to, right? I mean, when we think about it, our time here on earth is really, really short in comparison with the grand scheme of things and, and with the creator's plan, right? So what better way to live life than being full of gratitude, being grateful in every moment, and that expanding the love within ourselves as well as the love we experience in our world and throughout the days of our lives? Because at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, the really only thing that's gonna matter is love, right? It's gonna matter, you know, who did we love and who loved us? And also, who were we able to make a difference in the lives of? You know, who were the people that made a difference in our lives and who were the people whose lives we could make a difference in, right? And the way that we can ensure happiness in our lives and the way that we can live our best life as our best self is to live from a place of gratitude because when we live from a place of gratitude, we live from a place of love. And love is the highest frequency, right? Love is the highest vibration, the highest frequency in the universe. And when we live from love, we're living as our best self, right? So this is a way that we can actually bring clarity to and a, a definite understanding, a tangible understanding of what does it mean to live your best life? What is all this talk I hear about? Well, live your best life as your best self or build your dream life or create life on your terms or transcend limitation. You wanna know what it means? It means that we live from a place of love because that is our highest nature. Our highest nature is love. We were designed to love by our creator, right? And that's why when we live from a place of love, we're living as our best self. And the best way to live from a place of love, the powerful, most surefire and effective way is to actually live an attitude of gratitude. It's beyond the words though, right? It's beyond saying or claiming or thinking that we live from an attitude of gratitude. It's actually practicing it throughout our day. Being grateful for being present in each moment. Being grateful for all of the wonderful things that we already have going for ourselves before we even wake up and get out of bed in the morning. You know, there are a lot of people in this world who have uh, very challenging circumstances, who are a lot less fortunate than most of us are waking up to each day. And in fact, a lot of times when we wake up on our worst day, that's better than a lot of other people's best day. And not in a comparison manner, because that's not what this is intended to be, just in a gratitude manner. Being grateful that we have, we have food to eat, right? We have a, a bed to sleep in at night. We have a roof over our heads. We have, you know, uh, clothes on our backs, right? We have things in our lives and our lives are full of things to be grateful for. So I just wanna challenge you guys to take some time after watching this video to get some clarity on what's been driving you in your life. What is your emotional home been in the past and where do you wanna shift it to? Also do some thinking about your top needs. What are the top two needs from the six needs I described and what have they been in the past and what do you want them to be going forward? And then I would like to hear from you guys as well uh, how are you guys practicing gratitude? How are you living with an attitude of gratitude throughout your days? And tell us about your transformation experience. How does living with this gratitude deep in your heart actually fill yourself and your life with love? So I'm looking forward to hearing back from you guys on this one, and I'm looking forward to staying tuned to catch you guys in the next one. Until then, 
elevate your awareness, be your best self, and live your best life. Be blessed. Thank you.